hello everyone and uh, I'm also happy to uh, give a presentation again from Belgrade and this is not the first one for me and uh, I will talk about the beneficial effects of the hyperbaric oxygen therapy in autism spectrum disorders today and uh, I would like to share my latest presentation, which is made in the in Tel Aviv in 19, 2019 at the annual meeting of the European Underwater Environmental Society. It was a hyperbaric medicine and brain conference. It was the first time in the world on the hyperbaric society they talk about the brain and the effects of the hyperbaric oxygen. It was like a revolution on 2019. And I'm very happy to share this presentation again because it is the biggest number of the studies in the world. And uh, so it will be uh, nice to have it again. So intro introduction and background is uh, about autism is the most common disease of the pervasive development of disorders. There are many theories as to the cause of autism spectrum disorders, such as abnormal cerebral blood flow to areas of the brain, birth trauma or lack of oxygen before, during, or after delivery, brain injuries, infections, reactions to vaccines. There are many biochemical aftermath in autism spectrum, but the most important ones are uh, impaired detoxification, depletion of antioxidants, oxidative stress, mineral deficiency, mitochondrial dysfunction, gastrointestinal dysfunction, and the chronic blood-brain barrier dysfunction, and immune system dysregulation. Many cases of uh, autism spectrum disorders today are secondary to cases of gut and brain inflammation. What were the materials and metals? So, as you know, we cannot make progressive pro uh, uh, research on the kids like autism, so we could be able to make uh, a retrospective review, and we performed a retrospective review in search of 127 children with autism spectrum disorder and 99 males, 28 females between the ages 3 to 12 years old who had done before and after the hyperbaric therapy, I mean the basal and controlled brain perfusion Technetium 99M HMPO single photon emission computer tomography, which is also called SPECT, scans between the years of 2004 to 2011. We also reviewed the magnetic resonance imaging results of the same children. There were all applied 50 sessions of hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And it is done at 1.5 atmosphere for 60 minutes once a day. And we compared the results of SPEC scans before those sessions and after with the SPEC scans. What was the results and the discussion about this study? Before hyperbaric oxygen therapy, 125 in 127 of the patients were revealed focal areas of decreased perfusion in temporal lobes of the brain. And 11, uh, 111 patients at the frontal lobes and 77 patients at the other areas of the brain. But hypoperfusion is also, means that there is a dysfunction on those areas. By contrast, all the patients had normal findings which means there is no morphological changes, and this means there is no dead cells. 
we determined that after hyperbaric oxygen therapy, uh, 103 of 127, I mean, 81.1% patients, spec scans findings were improved. As you can see here with the arrow, the hypoperfusion area, which is also a decreased functional area, which is at this function, and which is also can be called neuroinflammation. And also you can see the same areas like here and here, as you can see here. But after the therapy, uh, as a symmetric organ, the perfusion is symmetric. It was not symmetric before, after the therapy, the all decreased areas are gone. So the total number of 127 patients uh, de uh, determined in this study and uh, 103 had improvement and 24 is not changed. And this is the 81.1 is very, very high number of the <clears throat> improvement. So we never seen before in any kind of therapies. Conclusions. The spec scan have been proven effective in this task. And it is the primary tool to objectively measure the effectiveness of the hyperbaric ox oxygen therapy on patients, as inert cells do not absorb the tracers at all. Spec scanning can distinguish between living and dead tissue. Spec scanning can also identify between recoverable brain cells, referred to as sleeping cells, idling neurons, or the ischemic penumbra. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which now being used for the children with autism spectrum disorder, is to address the neuroinflammatory component of the disorder. There is emerging evidence of chronic blood-brain barrier dysfunction in these children also. The use of the high dosage oxygen is based on the latest research into its role in the control of inflammation. After hyperbaric oxygen therapy, extensive perfusion improvements involving the brain were found in the study. Spec scans may be more sensitive in reflecting the pathophysiology of autism than magnetic resonance imaging. In autism, what we see, we see neuro-increased uh, neurodegenerative disease, an increase in oxidative stress, increased excretion of porphyrins, and increased neuroinflammation and gastrointestinal inflammation, and also more hypoperfusion areas in the cerebrum. So, after hyperbaric oxygen therapy, everything returns and cerebral hypoperfusion is decreased, neuroinflammation is decreased, excretion of porphyrins are decreased, oxidative stress are decreased, and we see decrease on also neurodegenerative disease. But at the same time, something is happening very good, which is stem cells are increasing after hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which is helpful for curing any inflammation in the body. So there's a study, which is my study based on, it's made, uh, it's done by the Johns Hopkins Medicine, Faculty of Medicine and the Department of the Neurology. And this is a uh, autopsy study. So it's a gold standard for us. And uh, it's done uh, it's done in 2005, and it says about the neuroactive, neuroglial activation and the neuroinflammation in the brain of the patients with autism. 
So this is a normal kid's brain without autism and inflammation. And this is a neuroinflammation easily can seen on the pathology. And uh, it's a proof for the neuroinflammation in kids with autism. The cases are from autism tissue program of the Harvard University, University of Miami, and the University of Maryland brain banks. So another indication for me to make the study is the gastrointestinal inflammation, because we know we can treat the inflammation in the intestinal area by hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So there are different study results. One of them says 88%, other one says 76%, the other says 100% uh, infl intestinal inflammation can be seen in those children. So you can see here is a normal esophagus and here an inflammation in the esophagus is so clear that you can understand it and here the inflammation in gastric area it is gastritis and next one uh, you can see here here the red areas that you hear are all inflammatory areas uh, it's shown by the capsule enter enteroscopy. Uh, it's uh, ileal inflammation. And finally, you can see thousands of ulcerations and inflammations in the colonic area. So we can say it's a panenteric inflammation. Start from the mouth and ends from the anus. <clears throat> Another indication for me was oxidative stress, because we know we call it not Fantastic Four, it's a movie, you know, but we can see who are fantastic here. The most uh, common problems seen in autism is are heavy metals, immunological problems, methylation and transurfuration. This means detoxification problems and oxidative stress. So what is uh, oxidative stress? Oxidative stress is caused by an imbalance of oxidants and antioxidants in body. But at pressures below two atmosphere, hyperbaric oxygen therapy can decrease the oxidative stress by increasing the antioxidant enzyme levels such as superoxide dismutase, catalase, glutathione peroxidase, and ham oxygenase 1 and paraoxonase. But at pressure above 2.5 atmosphere, the literature is conflicted and hyperbaric oxygen therapy may actually increase the oxidative stress. This is why me and many professionals in this field, we are recommending to do the hyperbaric therapy sessions under 1.7 or between 1.5 or 1.7 atmosphere for every kid with autism. Because at the same time, many of the kids have heavy metal board burden and they need to detoxify those their bodies with antioxidant enzymes. And another indication to use hyperbaric oxygen therapy in autism cases. A scientific study completed at the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine reports that hyperbaric oxygen therapy is a safe and effective way to mobilize stem cells i mean we are our own stem cells so stem cells are also called progenitor cells are crucial for to the repair and injured tissues and organs and it's also used for anti-aging uh, nowadays 
Hyperbaric oxygen therapy increased by eight, in some studies also say 10 fold, the number of the circulating stem cells throughout the body. Healthy recovery of injured and diseased tissues is the ultimate goal and stem cells play an essential role. And this is why um, it's also used for Alzheimer disease, Parkinson disease, MS patients, epilepsy and autism. In last three years, now we have another uh, indication to use hyperbaric oxygen therapy in neuroinflammation cases. And researchers find textbook altering link between brain and immune system. In a stunning discovery <clears throat> that overturns the case of textbook teaching, researchers at the University of Virginia School of Medicine have determined that the brain is directly connected to the immune system by vessels previously thought not to exist. That such vessels could have es escaped detection when the lymphatic system has been so truly mapped. Throughout the body is surprising on its own. But the true significance of the discovery lies in the effects it could have on the study and treatment of neurological disease ranging from autism to Alzheimer's disease to multiple sclerosis. As you can see here, in the past, what we know about the lymphatic system was like this. But now we know brain also have a lymphatic uh, connection with the body. So here are my, my patients, some of them, and uh, I, I, I would like to give you some very special uh, photos. This is one of my uh, very famous patient. He's well known in the world because he's totally recovered and he has a lot of videos on the internet. If you can search hyperbaric oxygen therapy and uh, video and autism, you will find his presentations. And these are, I am very happy to tell, these chambers are in Belgrade. And the kids are treated by Professor Jovanovic and who was the uh, ex-minister of education in Serbia. And he's a professor of physiology in Belgrade University, uh, Faculty of Medicine. What we do through these sessions, we make sure that the brain's inactive cells develop to the normal function. When the brain cells are able to utilize the molecules of oxygen in the air, the treatment is finished. To confirm this, we do a second SPECT scan. So how we do, we have a gamma camera like this and they go under uh, anesthesia to be stable on the, during the study. Oops, sorry. And this is a recovery room for waking up. And I do the re reconstruction and processing of the all images and I share the results with the patients. Okay. What is happening after that? As I said before, I would like to show you some uh, <clears throat> another uh, proofs about the improvements. Look at here. It is 5th of March. And after two years of special education, he could do only this when you say, please write your, uh, write your name. But after the... Uh, 16 days is 21st of March and he start writing his name. And there are also many uh, other studies, especially some of them made in Serbia uh, and they presented at 2012 uh, European Biomedical Society's meeting and I was there with another meeting. 
And but we are not directly doing the hyperbaric oxygen therapy to all kids. So intensity of symptoms made us to use a different treatment and and the intensity of the treatment is changing. So what we do, we start with the educational and the behavioral therapies. And then we add by environmental controls and step by step we go dietary interventions, nutritional therapies, gastrointestinal health control and immune issues and inflammation. And after me, uh, Rolf Herrick will speak about uh, immune issues and the promotion of the natural liver detoxification. Pharmaceutical chelation, other drug therapy, uh, it's not used by me in maybe more than 99% of the patients. It's just for in case of emergency in some patients. But uh, I'm not using it uh, more than 15 years, I think. But in some centers, they are using already. And at last, therapy for me, and the strongest one is the hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So I uh, start making these presentations. It was 2007 in Egypt. And uh, 2008, it was in uh, <clears throat> Autism Neuroscience Conference uh, hosted by the University of Cambridge. Uh, I gave also the changes secondary to heavy metal intoxication and detected by the brain perfusion spect in children with autism. And finally, we go to uh, we went to uh, a world congress in uh, United States in Las Vegas. We shared our first biggest group of patients and show the effects of the hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And that one was in Serbia and uh, some studies from Serbia and Israel also was in this Congress. And I, but this time I put a case report to show the eff effective an effective combination for the treatment of neuroinflammation in children with autism by doing hyperbaric oxygen therapy and chelation together. That was a case report. And uh, at 2017, the, there was a World Congress again in Serbia. And I would like to thank Serbia because Serbia is really like a pioneer in this, uh, in this field. So Professor Tomislav Jovanovic, a physiologist, has long proven that oxygen also affects the development of toddlers. And he mentioned about me and said, Dr. Jem from Turkey uh, is particularly concerned with this, claiming that there is neuroinflammation in the children with autism. And what I said, if there is inflammation, it's an inflammatory disease. So it is, you know, I told before, uh, it is proven by the <clears throat> Johns Hopkins University. And so oxygen therapy will help. And this method is very safe, not only for children with autism, but also for those who have some neurological problem and stagnation. And as you can see here, there are many studies they had made um, by other centers, by different pressures and different oxygens, but there's a group here and uh, with the same treatment with me is 1.5 atmosphere and 100% oxygen. But you can see here, oops, there are 200 uh, cases, but please take a look at here. 54% of the total cases are our patients. So I can tell you, never ever give up. You can use many treatments and you have to start with uh, stop poisoning them, 
take uh, take all the time help from the educational part and it's like a software you need a software and what we are doing is fixing the hardware so for a computer as our kids so we need software and hardware together this is my son before treatments and after hyperbaric oxygen therapy look at look at his face and his looking his eye contact and today i am very proud with him and he's a very handsome boy but the problem is he's an angel and this world is not heaven hope to see you again and thank you and i can take some questions but i think we lost 10 minutes with the previous uh speaker so we can better to go with the next <clears throat> presentation and it will be on time i think no we still have uh, uh, thank you so much for this great presentation we still have a few minutes to maybe answer some questions Yes. You just reminded me in your uh, presentation about uh, Professor Tomislav uh, uh, Jovanovic, and it's actually such a shame we, he hasn't given any presentation, but I hope uh, in the next uh, conference he'll be able to speak. I personally, in my practice, seen a lot of children who went on this uh, therapy, and I must admit, even though this is not my expertise at all, uh, but I did see the 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 you know the, these children getting better after this therapy so i'm sure that some children who are candidates for this kind of therapy can really benefit from it so my question to you is a very short one how many uh hbo therapies do you recommend on average so what the the, the session i mean how many sessions in in other words um actually um i have a very long uh, questionnaire about 20 more than 20 pages and after do uh, and i do a metabolic test uh, like an organ organic acid testing and i check for the intestinal yeast and bacteria because if there is a candida and if it is a huge number so hyperbaric oxygen therapy will kill them all in a short time and their dead bodies can make hexamer reaction so i need to check to say 40 sessions for a start or 50 sessions for a start it can be 1.5 or it can be 1.7 for example if there is also a lyme disease if there's a borrelia positive i use a higher pressure like 1.7 but if there's no borrelia I go with 1.5, <coughs> especially if they are also having problem with epilepsy or seizure. So it depends on the kid's situation, right. and there's no standard therapy for that. Every kid has to be evaluated by an expert. Okay. So, but I'm very happy. Belgrade have four or five centers and two of them are uh getting uh covered by the government yes also Healthcare. also covered by the government yeah that was what i'm going to say and it's also covered by the government and in balkans serbia is the only uh country is covering these therapies by government and not only also from you know, only from Serbia, they also accept the kids from ex Yugoslavia. Yes, from the region. Yes, from the region. I I really, from my heart, I want to thank the Serbian government for that, because we need this understanding, we need this approach all over the world, and Serbia mm -hmm. is now is like a locomotive and i hope we can be the wagons after this locomotive thank you so much dr kinati so we'll see you tomorrow uh, for the second presentation which is also very interesting see you until tomorrow then okay okay thank take you. care of yourself bye thank you bye bye